quite enduring a life that most would find unbearable. Epictetus didn't let his external conditions define his inner world. He focused on what he could control, his thoughts and reactions. It's like that stoic concept of, you have power over your mind, not outside events. He later became a prominent philosopher, teaching stoicism and inspiring countless others. He emphasized the importance of living in accordance with nature and mastering our desires at you. So, when you're grappling with life's challenges or striving for a deeper sense of purpose, think of Epictetus. His story and stoic wisdom can serve as a lantern in the darkness, helping you navigate your journey with resilience and inner strength. Let's delve into his world of stoicism together and discover the gems of wisdom it offers for our Fanny Nay Pixies. When premium ingredients like smooth caramel, crunchy pecans, and creamy milk chocolate come together, memories are made forever. Oh, lives. The only thing I ask of you is not to skip this video in any way. If you're here, consider yourself different from the majority. Consider yourself an exception. Now, act like one and don't skip any part of the content. 1. Amor Fati. Embrace your fate. You know, there's this fascinating stoic concept called Amor Fati, which essentially means loving your fate. It's about embracing not just the good things that happen in life, but also the challenges and setbacks. Imagine seeing every obstacle as an opportunity for growth and transformation. It's like saying, hey life, throw whatever you want at me, and I'll find a way to make the most of it. Life is unpredictable, right? Sometimes things don't go the way we plan, and that's where Amor Fati comes in. It encourages us to accept the hand we are dealt and find a way to turn even the toughest situations into something positive. It's about resilience, about saying, I won't let circumstances define me. I'll define how I respond to them. Two, serve others, contribute to the common good. I've always been inspired by the stoic idea of serving others. It's not just about being selfless. It's about understanding that when we contribute positively to our community or the world, it not only benefits others, but also brings a deep sense of purpose and fulfillment to our own lives. It's like this beautiful cycle of giving and receiving. Think about it. When you help someone or make a positive impact on their life, it's like planting a seed of goodness. And that seed grows, not just in their life, but also in yours. You feel this sense of connection of making a meaningful difference. It's a reminder that we're not alone on this journey. We're all interconnected. Three, memento mori. Remember your mortality. Have you ever heard of memento mori? It's a Latin phrase that means, remember you will die. Now I know that might sound a bit morbid at first, but it's actually a powerful reminder to live each day to the fullest. Imagine waking up every morning with the thought that this day might be your last. It's a call to appreciate life, cherish moments, and make every day count. Memento Mori isn't about dwelling on death. It's about embracing life with a sense of urgency and purpose. It's like having a little voice in your head that says, Hey, time is precious. Don't waste it on things that don't matter. It's about prioritizing what truly brings you joy and fulfillment, both in your actions and your relationships. 4. Self-discipline, your internal compass. So, self-discipline, it's like having your own internal compass. It's the ability to stay on track and focused, especially when life throws distractions or temptations our way. It's about making choices that align with your long-term goals, even when the easy path might lead you astray. Think of it as the secret source to achieving your dreams. It's about taking consistent action, even when you don't feel like it. Self-discipline helps you build good habits, whether it's in your work, your health, or your personal growth. It's like having that friend who keeps you accountable to your best self. Five. 
morning routine, your blueprint for success. Picture your morning routine as the foundation of your day. It's that intentional time in the morning where you set the tone for how the rest of the day will unfold. Whether it's meditation, exercise, or simply planning your day, it's a way to start with purpose and clarity. A morning routine is like your daily blueprint for success. It's not about being rigid, but about creating a space for self-care and personal growth. When you start your day intentionally, it's amazing how it positively impacts your productivity and overall well-being. It's like giving yourself a head start in the marathon of life. 6. Essentialism. Simplify your life. Essentialism is all about simplifying your life. Think of it like decluttering. Not just your physical space, but also your mind. It's about recognizing what truly matters and focusing on that while letting go of unnecessary distractions. By doing this, you create space for what's important. Imagine your life as a room filled with various objects. Some are valuable, some are junk, and some are just taking up space. Essentialism is like going through that room, identifying the valuables, and getting rid of the clutter. It's about saying no to things that don't align with your values or goals, and yes to what truly matters. This practice brings clarity and a sense of purpose to your life. 7. Adaptability. Embrace change. Life can be unpredictable, right? So, adaptability is like your superpower in dealing with change. It's about being flexible and finding new ways forward when things don't go as planned. Instead of getting stuck, you pivot and make the most out of challenging situations. Think of it as being like a bamboo tree in a storm. It bends and sways with the wind but doesn't break. Adaptability is about not resisting change, but embracing it as an opportunity for growth. It's a mindset that said, Ooh. Additionally, it would be wise to carefully take notes about every lesson we communicate with you. These timeless truths could serve as the compass that directs you towards a life that is more rewarding and fulfilling. Without further ado, let's begin our quest for knowledge of the 50 Stoic ideas that will alter the way you see the world. Don't miss out on starting your motivational journey to master your emotions. Principle 1. Practice Empathy. The Stoics promoted empathy as the foundation of effective human interactions. This view is supported by modern social psychology, which shows that empathy improves the quality of our social relationships and our own fulfillment. Epictetus encourages us to imagine ourselves in the shoes of others. He stated, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. We become more understanding and connected to our surroundings as we cultivate empathy. My friend, empathy is essential. Principle 2. Use virtue as a compass. According to the Stoics, virtue is seen as the foundation of a happy existence. Positive psychology backs up this claim by demonstrating that developing personal values is related to increased life happiness. Seneca concludes with a profound thought. The wise man is content with being wise. Nothing more, nothing less. This remark emphasizes the necessity of leading a genuine life based on one's own convictions, rather than seeking external acceptance. Principle 3. Have gratitude as cornerstone. Gratitude, as emphasized by the Stoics, has been proven to improve mental and emotional health. Practicing appreciation on a regular basis might boost life satisfaction. As Seneca put it, life is like a loan that we can use for anything, but we must pay it back one day. Recognizing and appreciating what we have rather than concentrating on what we lack leads to a more fulfilled existence. Principle 4. The Transience of Life Marcus Aurelius asks us to consider the momentary essence of life. This viewpoint is supported by the psychology of wisdom, which demonstrates that thinking long-term minimizes anxiety about minor problems and allows us to thoroughly enjoy each and every moment. As the philosopher emperor once said, everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. This saying encourages us to accept impermanence and live in the present moment with thankfulness. Principle five, understand what you can control and what you cannot. The Stoics, like Epictetus, 
encourage us to think deeply about the idea of control in our lives. This idea is supported by cognitive research, which shows that constant worrying over the uncontrolled can result in elevated stress and anxiety levels. Epictetus gave us some great advice when he said, Do not expect events to happen as you wish, accept them as they occur. This suggests that we should accept the waves of life rather than battling them. Instead, concentrate on the decisions and actions that are under our control. Principle 6. Decide how to react. Influenced by the Stoics, Viktor Frankl demonstrated that even in the midst of misfortune we have the ability to choose our reaction. He went on to say, between stimulus and response there is a space, and in that space is our power to choose our response. This concept reminds us that even when things are difficult, we have the ability to choose how we respond. Using this ability can change the way we live our lives. Principle 7. Embrace simplicity. The Stoics, like Seneca, believed that simplicity was the path to inner calm. According to research on minimalism, having less can lead to greater pleasure and mental clarity. We do not dare to venture because things are difficult, Seneca stated. They are challenging because we are afraid to venture out. This encourages us to simplify our lives by removing the unnecessary and concentrating on what is most important. Principle 8. Humbleness and success. Even in triumph, the Stoics respected humility. According to success psychology, being humble helps keep us focused on growth and ongoing progress. Epictetus said, Do not be concerned with the things you can't control but with the way you handle the things you can control. Practicing humility helps us stay focused on our ideals and prevents arrogance and laziness. Principle 9. Willingness to change. Epictetus tells us to accept what we cannot change and to be courageous enough to alter what we can. This idea is supported by the positive psychology of transformation. Epictetus once stated, What matters is not what happens to you, but how you react to it. We may confront life with more strength and control over our surroundings by changing our attitudes and behaviors. Principle 10. The importance of the present moment. The Stoics place a high priority on the present. According to mindfulness psychology, living in the present moment increases happiness. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, Marcus Aurelius stated. B1. This notion encourages us to enjoy and seize the present moment while acknowledging that the past is irreversible and the future is unknown. Principle 11. The power of self-discipline. Epictetus emphasizes the need for self-discipline to achieve self-transcendence. This view is supported by modern psychology, which shows that self-discipline is related to life success. His message, no one is free whose mind is not like a master encourages us to recognize how our impulses and wants, if left unchecked, could restrict our freedom. Self-discipline frees us from the constraints of our temporary cravings and needs. Principle 12. Embrace vulnerability. Epictetus encourages us to acknowledge the weaknesses humanity has. According to psychological studies, self-acceptance lessens anxiety and despair. Epictetus went on to say, if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid with regard to external things. By accepting our flaws and limits, we liberate ourselves from excessive self-demand and achieve deeper inner peace. Principle 13. Relationships matter. Relationships and community are highly important to the Stoics. Sociological studies back up this notion, demonstrating that strong social relationships are associated with pleasure and longevity. In the words of Seneca, no one is the owner of all his wisdom. The wisdom belongs to us all. Community collaboration and mutual assistance may improve our lives and strengthen our resilience. Principle 14, moderation in all things. The stoic idea of moderation corresponds to the scientific understanding of life balance. According to psychological studies, moderation in habits and behaviors is essential for mental and physical health. Do not desire what you do not have. Be thankful for what you do have, Epictetus said. Keeping our behaviors and desires in check helps us to live in peace and avoid dangerous extremes. Principle 15, serenity and adversity. The Stoics, such as Marcus Aurelius, advocated calm in the face of hardship. 
Resilience psychology emphasizes the significance of this mindset. The Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius remarked, Adversity is the test of a man. Only when he has been tested in adversity can he know himself. Taking on obstacles with calm and determination strengthens us and helps us progress, even in the most difficult circumstances. Principle 16. The Elegance of Simplicity. Stoicism promotes simplicity as a source of beauty and clarity. This idea is supported by design psychology, which demonstrates how a streamlined environment and lifestyle may boost creativity and productivity. Things are the way they are, not the way we should name them, Epictetus said. By removing unneeded complications from our lives, we can focus on what is actually important. Principle 17. Purpose in Life. The Stoics recommended discovering one's life's purpose and passion. Personal satisfaction psychology highlights how having a sense of purpose may boost life satisfaction. Epictetus said, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Pursuing a significant purpose and living passionately leads to a deeper and more fulfilling life. Principle 18. The Wisdom of Listening. Active listening is valued by the Stoics as a method of learning and better understanding others. Communication psychology emphasizes the relevance of this skill in enhancing interpersonal interactions. He said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Practicing attentive listening increases empathy and strengthens our bonds with others. Principle 19, authenticity and honesty. The Stoics and Epictetus both emphasize the significance of living a genuine and honest life. According to the psychology of authenticity, being genuine with oneself is associated with personal fulfillment. Epictetus once said, freedom is the only worthy goal in life. It is won by disregarding things that lie beyond our control. Honesty and authenticity practices free us from the disguise of hypocrisy and enable us to carry on with integrity. Principle 20, Mastery of Emotions. The Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, promoted mastering emotional control. This viewpoint is supported by emotional psychology, which emphasizes how emotional control may improve one's quality of life. Do not let your emotions control you. Change your thoughts and you will change your emotions, Marcus Aurelius stated. Self-awareness and emotional management practice allow us to make more balanced decisions and confront obstacles with calm. Principle 21. Deferred gratification. Deferred enjoyment was recommended by the Stoics as a path of self-realization. The psychology of self-control demonstrates how postponing gratification may promote long-term enjoyment. According to Epictetus, temptation often comes in the form of an immediate opportunity to satisfy a desire. Patience and self-control help us accomplish more important and long-term goals. Principle 22. The Strength of Resilience. The Stoics' emphasis on resilience has been widely researched in positive psychology. The best revenge is to be unlike the one who committed the injustice, Marcus Aurelius counseled. Cultivating resilience equips us with the flexibility and strength to confront obstacles. We can grow and thrive as a result of hardship, becoming stronger and wiser people. Principle 23, Ongoing Self-Assessment. The Stoics promoted constant self-assessment as a strategy for growth as a person. Self-awareness psychology emphasizes the need to reflect on our actions and behaviors. Epictetus stated, examine your words and deeds and you will soon see in what direction you are moving. Self-evaluation helps us find areas for growth and continue on our journey of virtue. Principle 24, self-compassion. The Stoic's definition of self-compassion correlates with the psychology of self-compassion. Seneca once said, There is no one more unfortunate than the person who never faces adversity. Self-compassion enables us to treat ourselves with love and understanding, especially during times of difficulty. Their principle 25, the importance of ongoing education. The Stoics believed that the persistent pursuit of knowledge and wisdom was a crucial lesson According to the psychology of lifelong learning, continuous education enhances our lives. Epictetus counseled, learn, teach. If you can't teach, write. If you can't write, reflect. 
Being open to new ideas and experiences enhances us and helps us develop as humans. Please subscribe to our channel to keep learning and grow as a person. Principle 26. Physical Self-Discipline Effects The Stoics also valued physical discipline. The psychology of self-control emphasizes how good behaviors may enhance one's quality of life. According to Epictetus, the body is the prison of the soul. Physical self-discipline, such as exercise and a healthy diet, helps us to take care of our health and well-being, which has a beneficial influence on the way we feel and think. Principle 27. Mental Discipline A major premise of Stoicism is the cultivation of a disciplined mind. The necessity of mental self-regulation is supported by cognitive psychology. Epictetus stated, You are a slave to what you do not control. Mental discipline enables us to steer away from damaging ideas and bad methods, resulting in a more balanced and attentive existence. Principle 28. Adversity as a teacher. Like Marcus Aurelius, the Stoics saw hardship as a chance for growth and learning. Post-traumatic growth psychology emphasizes how conquering challenges may lead to increased strength and knowledge. According to Marcus Aurelius, adversity is the test of a man. Only when he has been tested in adversity can he know himself. Difficulties allow us to grow and obtain a better understanding of ourselves. Principle 29. Conscious Decision Making The Stoics emphasize the need for conscious decision making when leading a life with purpose. The psychology of decision making emphasizes how deliberate decisions may lead to more satisfying results. Epictetus said, first say to yourself what you would be and then do what you have to do. Being aware when making decisions will help us live in accordance with our beliefs and ambitions. Principle 30. Persistence in Virtue The Stoics saw virtue and perseverance as the keys to living an ethical and fulfilling life. According to moral psychology, living in line with our ideals results in better personal fulfillment. Virtue is the only good. Virtue requires nothing else, Seneca urged. Perseverance in virtue leads us to a more honest and valuable existence. Principle 31. Conscious Communication The Stoics understand the value of good communication. Communication psychology emphasizes how transparency and sensitivity in communication may build connections and avoid miscommunication. Epictetus counseled, speak and say what is more beautiful than silence. Conscious and compassionate conversation may strengthen our bonds with people and foster more successful communication. Principle 32. Tolerance for Uncertainty Stoicism highlights the need for tolerance for uncertainty. The psychology of resilience emphasizes how adaptation may be increased by being adaptable in unpredictable situations. According to Seneca, the wise man cannot receive anything unless he is prepared to receive it. Tolerating uncertainty helps us confront situations with calm and enhances our adaptability. Principle 33. Empathy towards others. The Stoics encouraged empathy for others as a method of strengthening connections and community. Empathy psychology demonstrates how placing oneself in the shoes of others increases the quality of our social relationships. According to Seneca, man is sacred to man. Empathy for others allows us to form more profound and lasting relationships. Principle 34. Integrity in Actions Stoicism emphasizes the importance of action integrity. The psychology of morality emphasizes how acting in accordance with our ideals increases personal fulfillment. According to Epictetus, a man's life is dyed by the color of his imagination. Integrity in our activities allows us to live in line with our ideals, while still maintaining an optimistic self-perception. Principle 35. Mindfulness in Daily Routine The Stoics advocate for mindfulness in daily life. The psychology of mindfulness demonstrates how staying involved in every situation can decrease stress and promote well-being. Epictetus said, When you wash your hands, when you have your meals, when you lie down to sleep, be aware of these actions. Performing mindfulness in our daily activities helps us to see beauty and value in the little things in life. Principle 36. Time Management Time management is vital for leading a fulfilling and successful existence. Time psychology emphasizes how structure and planning may boost productivity and minimize stress. Life can be wasted by forgetting. 
said Marcus Aurelius. Time management helps us make better use of our most important resource, time, in order to accomplish our objectives and live a happier life. Principle 37. Generosity and Kindness. Stoicism places a high value on generosity and kindness. Acts of generosity, according to positive psychology, can promote pleasure and well-being. According to Seneca, life is like a play. It's not about how long it lasts, but how good it is. Giving to those in need not only benefits those we help, but it also enhances our lives and makes us feel more connected to mankind. Principle 38, the value of reflection. Marcus Aurelius's reflection provides psychological advantages, such as lowering stress and anxiety. He went on to say, nothing happens to any man that he is not formed by nature to bear. Reflection enables us to get a deeper understanding of our behaviors, feelings, and thoughts, allowing us to make more informed decisions that are consistent with our beliefs. Principle 39, understanding impermanence. The Stoics recognized life's impermanence. According to wisdom psychology, understanding this reality can result in a better appreciation for every moment. Everything you have today was yesterday's belonging. Tomorrow belongs to someone else, Marcus Aurelius stated. Understanding impermanence permits us to live in the present with thankfulness and confront life with calm. Principle 40. Virtue as most valuable asset. Stoicism illustrates that virtue is the most valuable asset one can have. The psychology of happiness emphasizes how living according to our principles generates higher life pleasure. True wealth is not desiring more, Seneca said. Choosing virtue as our top priority liberates us from the compulsive chase of materialistic items and helps us find genuine success in our ethical behaviors. Principle 41. Value minimalism in life. The Stoics promoted minimalism as a means of achieving inner calm. The psychology of simplicity focuses on how simplifying our lives might lower stress and promote happiness. He said, happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. Practicing simplicity allows us to focus on what is important and live a less complex existence. Principle 42. Importance of being authentic. Stoicism considers being authentic to be a key value. The psychology of authenticity emphasizes the need to be honest with oneself in order to achieve higher life happiness. Love the life you live, trust the journey you have been through, Marcus Aurelius stated. Living in line with our values and beliefs helps us live a more valuable life. Principle 43, disconnect from outcomes. Stoicism preaches detachment from outcomes as a means of reducing worry and suffering. The psychology of independence demonstrates how concentrating on the process itself, rather than the outcome, may boost personal fulfillment. Do not expect the fruits to be greater than the labor, Marcus Aurelius warned. Detachment permits us to stop worrying about what we cannot control, and instead find serenity in the activity itself. Principle 44. Strength in Adversity. Like Seneca, the Stoics believe that misfortune may be used to strengthen oneself. According to resilience psychology, experiencing adversity might help you build emotional resilience. Seneca went on to say, do not complain about your life. If you can improve it, do so. If not, then accept your fate. Learning to confront challenges with dedication and bravery can result in considerable personal development. Principle 45, personal responsibility. Stoicism encourages personal responsibility. The psychology of responsibility highlights the importance of accepting responsibility for our behavior in promoting maturity and development. If it is endurable, endure it. Stop complaining, Marcus Aurelius pleaded. Personal responsibility allows us to be in charge of our personal lives and make wise choices. Principle 46, recognition of interdependence. Stoicism recognizes the interconnectedness of all humans. The psychology of community highlights how recognizing our shared humanity could improve our relationships and well-being. Epictetus said, there is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things that are beyond the power of our will. Recognizing interconnectedness helps us comprehend how our actions influence other people and encourages us to behave more mindfully and morally. Principle 47, 
respectfully accept differences. The Stoics supported the concept of respectfully accepting the differences each individual had. Diversity psychology focuses on how respect and tolerance for differences create harmonious cohabitation. First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do, said Epictetus. Accepting diversity helps us establish more inclusive communities and relate to others with greater balance. Principle 48. Power of Gratitude. Stoicism puts a strong emphasis on gratitude. Positive psychology highlights the importance of practicing gratitude and improving life satisfaction. When you wake up in the morning, remember what a beautiful privilege it is to be alive, Marcus Aurelius stated. Learning how to be grateful teaches us to be thankful for what we have and to discover happiness in the smallest details of life. Principle 49. Perseverance in the pursuit of knowledge. Stoicism promotes patience in the quest for knowledge as a virtue. The field of learning psychology highlights how patience in capturing knowledge leads to increased intellectual progress. According to Seneca, it's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. Patience in the quest for knowledge helps us thoroughly investigate ideas and multiple viewpoints. Principle 50. Power of Positive Communication. Positive communication is valued by the Stoics as a means of improving connections and encouraging peace. Positive communication builds ties according to the psychology of interpersonal communication. Seneca stated, if you wish to be loved, love. Positive communication enables us to form better and more rewarding relationships. These Stoic ideas can be seen as valuable knowledge treasures that may fundamentally change how we see and experience life. You will be on the way to a more meaningful, balanced, and fulfilling existence if you incorporate these principles into your everyday life. Stoic philosophy, backed up by current psychology, provides crucial insights for achieving wisdom and self-transcendence. Sto- Big moment here for Charles, who ate a big old bowl of Raisin Bran Crunch. And in life, when things get really tough, it's not always because they are inherently difficult to handle. Instead, it's often our own fears that make them so daunting. Learning, for example, isn't just a matter of putting in effort. It's more like a blend of hard work, maintaining curiosity, reading a lot, and thinking very carefully. It's a bit like embarking on a great adventure that not only gives you new knowledge, but helps you improve in different things and allows you to see the world from many angles. But here's the catch. To really get the hang of this learning thing, you need to be open-minded. This means being ready to check out new ideas and not being afraid to ask questions or challenge what you think you already know. It's not simply about gathering information. It's more about exploring the world around you and understanding yourself better. The whole concept of this learning journey aligns quite well with Stoic philosophy. Stoicism is about people trying to understand themselves better to find genuine happiness and peace within themselves. Becoming smarter isn't just about filling your head with facts and figures. It's about knowing yourself, staying calm even when life brings challenges, and becoming good at things that not only improve your life, but also make the lives of those around you better. It's about thinking very clearly, being kind to others, keeping calm even in tough times and handling everyday situations. All these skills come from working on yourself, reflecting on things, and always striving to learn more. Stoic philosophy believes that becoming smarter is a continuous adventure. It's like planting seeds in your mind and ensuring they grow into intelligent thoughts. But how do you water these seeds? Here are 10 ways to make your brain smarter. But before we explore these amazing techniques to boost the power of the mind, I'd like to ask a small favor. Please like this video, and if possible, subscribe to the channel. This helps us keep bringing valuable content and more importantly, shows your support for this journey of knowledge. Let's go together on this quest for growth and learning. One. Reading Habit In Stoic teachings, reading is like exploring portals to new realms of knowledge. Each page is an invitation to new ideas and worldviews. It's a feast for the mind, nurturing it with thoughts and concepts that expand the understanding of the whole. Reading, beyond entertaining, has the power to connect us more deeply with reality, expand our vocabulary, and lead us to deeper reflections. Cultivating the habit of reading is nurturing the soul making it wiser and more fit for the journey of life. Trying to set aside at least 30 minutes before bedtime for this practice is to conclude the day in an enriching way. 
It's a moment when the mind absorbs, ponders, and prepares for rest, growing and strengthening on the path of wisdom. In the Stoic universe, nighttime reading is not just a habit, but an investment in the pursuit of personal excellence. Allow yourself this gift before resting, and notice how your mind strengthens to face the challenges of the next day with more wisdom and resilience. 2. Never stop learning. In the Stoic world, the relentless pursuit of knowledge is seen as an imperative for personal development. Imagine your intellect as an insatiable sponge, eager to absorb every drop of wisdom and knowledge available. Learning is the nourishment that feeds this intellectual sponge. It's keeping alive the flame of curiosity, ensuring that the mind is constantly immersed in new discoveries. See the journey of learning as an endless road, where the thirst for knowledge never runs dry. Engage in online courses, delve into areas that passion you, be it art, programming, or even cooking. Keeping this curious flame alive, witness your intellect illuminate, shining with newly acquired wisdom. The tireless quest for knowledge is vital for personal growth. By constantly feeding your intellect, you not only prepare for the challenges of the world, but also enrich the journey of life with the light of continuous learning. It's a journey where each new piece of knowledge strengthens the mind, preparing it to face the challenges of existence more insightfully, resiliently, and wisely. 3. Puzzles and Games The pursuit of excellence extends beyond mere knowledge absorption. It involves constant challenge and training of the mind, Viewing puzzles and games not just as entertainment but as fundamental exercises to strengthen the intellect is one of the central principles. Solving Sudoku, crosswords, or immersing oneself in strategic challenges like chess are more than mere pastimes. They are vigorous workouts for the mind. Each game faced is a direct stimulus for the brain, strengthening its logical reasoning, problem-solving skills, and strategic acumen. By dedicating daily time to these challenges, you establish a true academy for your intellect, refining it to face the complexities of the world. Just as the Stoics emphasized the continuous practice of virtue and self-control, consistent practice of these games fortifies the mind, preparing it to face challenges and thrive in situations that demand mental agility and strategic thinking. These games are not just a distraction, but a path to sharpen the mind, making it more resilient, agile, and capable of handling life's challenges with a sharp and strategic mind. 4. Physical Movement for a Happier Mind In Stoic philosophy, the interconnection between physical activity and mental health is seen as fundamental for a balanced and fulfilling life. Engaging in aerobic exercises such as running or cycling is not just a practice to strengthen the body, it's a revitalizing source of vitality for the mind. Making a commitment to at least 30 minutes, three times a week, with these aerobic activities is like opening the floodgates for a constant flow of vital energy to your brain. This practice is akin to an invigorating bath for the mind, propelling it into a vibrant and agile state. Aerobic exercises trigger a range of benefits for the brain, increasing blood circulation and oxygenation, essential for optimized brain function. Moreover, they promote the release of brain chemicals like endorphins, contributing to a more serene and balanced mental state. In the Stoic view, this commitment to physical movement is not just an investment in body health. It's a strategy to nurture happiness and mental clarity. It's like providing fuel for the mind, allowing it to operate at its maximum potential. By embracing this practice, you're not only benefiting the body but also nurturing the mind, cultivating a fuller and more rewarding existence where the mind is balanced and agile to face life's challenges. It's an act of self-care and self-development that impacts not only the physical but also the emotional, making the journey more complete and meaningful. Whatever the holidays mean to you, get the most out of them in a new hunt. 5. Meditative Mastery In Stoic philosophy, the practice of meditation is seen as a journey towards inner mastery, a technique that transcends mere routine to become a true superpower for the mind. Allocating 10 minutes every morning to this tranquil ritual is like opening the floodgates to an uninterrupted flow of calm and mental clarity that permeates the rest of the day. Meditating from this perspective is not just an act of concentration, but transforms into a deep dive to allow the mind to slow down. These precious minutes of contemplation and introspection not only set the stage for a calmer and more focused day, but are the foundation upon which the structure of inner serenity stands. 
Stoics recognize in meditation not only a moment of pause, but a powerful tool to cultivate inner peace, enhance concentration, and nurture the ability to cope with the challenges of existence. Embracing this morning ritual is not just a contemplation practice. It is a journey of self-discovery and mental strengthening. By dedicating oneself daily to this contemplative pause, you not only grant yourself a moment of tranquility, but also provide the mind with a tool to face the ups and downs of everyday life with greater clarity and emotional stability. It's like cultivating a reservoir of inner peace that not only benefits the mind, but radiates positively throughout the daily journey, influencing how we engage with the complexities of life. Thus, meditation, in this understanding, is not just a morning act, but a constant refinement of awareness, a true superpower that guides us in the pursuit of balance and serenity amidst the vicissitudes of existence. Six. New skills for mental stimulation. The pursuit of new skills is like a journey towards expanding the mind. It's not just a challenge, but resembles the discovery of a hidden level in a game, an opportunity to enhance and unlock new potentials. Opting to acquire a skill that sparks curiosity, such as playing a musical instrument, is committing to regular practice sessions, igniting an exciting challenge for the brain. In this context, acquiring a new skill is not merely gaining practical knowledge, it is an exercise in resilience, patience, and focus. It's the creation of neural connections, expanding the limits of the mind, and reconfiguring cognitive abilities. Stoics recognize that acquiring new skills is more than simple learning. It's a journey of self-improvement. By committing to regular practice to master this new skill, you're not just gaining new knowledge, but challenging yourself to higher levels of concentration, discipline, and personal growth. By diving into this quest for new skills, you not only enhance a specific skill, but also expand the mind, exercising it in a challenging and enriching manner. It's like opening new pathways for the mind to explore, unlocking hidden potentials, and promoting constant growth and personal development. 7. Social Interactions For the Stoics, the value of social interactions goes beyond mere entertainment. It is seen as a true exercise for the mind. Engaging in social activities that provide cognitive stimulation is viewed as an opportunity not only for connection, but also for mental exercise. Interacting with new people, exchanging ideas in groups or clubs not only provides enjoyment, but is a valuable challenge for the brain. This type of interaction is like opening windows to different perspectives, expanding the understanding of the world. In the Stoic view, these social experiences are not just moments of socializing, but opportunities for personal growth. By engaging in debates, idea exchanges, and social interactions, one exercises not only the mind, but also the ability to understand and respect different points of view. Meeting new people and sharing experiences are essential for mental enrichment. The diversity of perspectives, challenges, and debates that arise in social interactions triggers intellectual stimulation. This constant exchange of ideas is like a true exercise for the mind, strengthening the ability to comprehend the world with a broader and more tolerant view. Thus, in Stoic philosophy, participation in social activities is not just a matter of socializing, but a valuable practice for mental development. It is a source of growth, offering a broader panorama of existence and enriching the mind with a diverse range of perspectives and experiences. 8. Nutrition to boost the brain. In Stoic philosophy, nutrition is seen as an essential element, not only to nourish the body, but also as a source of support for brain health. Viewing the plate as a canvas, where we carefully choose foods to nourish not only the body but also the mind, reflects the pursuit of a holistic balance between physical and mental health. The strategic introduction of foods recognized to boost the brain, such as omega-3 rich fish and antioxidant rich red fruits, is likened to summoning true superheroes for the health and functionality of your brain. This nutritional approach is not merely a practice to satisfy hunger, but is seen as an active care for brain health. Stoics understand that a clear and agile mind is essential for dealing with life's challenges. Therefore, consciously selecting foods that promote brain health is not just a dietary choice. It is a commitment to mental enhancement. The inclusion of these superfoods in the diet is seen as a strategy to strengthen not only the body, but also the mind, allowing for a more balanced and healthy existence. These foods are considered allies on the journey toward a healthier and more resilient brain capable of facing the challenges of daily life with more clarity and vitality. 
The stoic view is that this nutritional approach goes beyond simple physical nourishment. It is an investment in mental well-being, becoming one of the pillars for a fuller and more balanced life. 9. Sleep is healing for the mind. Sleep is a vital operating system for the brain, going beyond a simple resting period and being perceived as a revitalizing treatment for the mind. Viewing sleep as more than mere repose is adopting a perspective that recognizes its essence as essential for the recovery and enhancement of brain function. Maintaining a consistent sleep routine is not just a healthy habit, but a strategy that allows the brain to rest, consolidate memories, and promote mental well-being. Stoics understand the importance of sleep not only for the body, but also for mental health. It is during sleep that the brain has the opportunity to consolidate information, reorganize thoughts and experiences, and play a crucial role in maintaining cognitive health. Maintaining a regular sleep routine is, in the Stoic view, an act of active care for the mind. The practice provides essential support for mental health, aiding in emotional regulation, learning consolidation, and promoting mental clarity that posit. One of the most well-known and famous Stoic philosophers of all time is Marcus Aurelius. He was seen as one of the last five great Roman emperors of his time, where he ruled from 161 to 180 after Christ. At the time, he held one of the most powerful positions in the world, and if he wanted, he could access all of his temptations and desires and have them fulfilled. But he chose to devote his life to pursuing justice and fairness. Aurelius found the time while he ruled to write meditations a collection of autobiographical writings that has grown to be one of the most important pieces of the Stoic philosophy. In his writings, Marcus provided instructions for personal development. These were mostly concerned with adopting a cosmic viewpoint and critically evaluating your judgment of others and yourself. Aurelius utilized his own Stoic philosophy when ruling a strong empire that endured several battles to let go of tension and worry and to be the most capable and dependable leader he could be. Next to that, Stoicism is not only a theory, it is also a highly well-known and centuries-old philosophy that shows an inspiring and motivating way of thinking and living. The Stoics had a strong belief that acting morally was the key to achieving personal satisfaction, and that acting morally required good judgment and reasonable thought. With that in mind, in this video we will discuss how to create a rational mind using five key concepts from Marcus Aurelius's teachings that can help you think more clearly. Lesson 1. Train your perception. Marcus Aurelius says, Choose not to be harmed and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed and you haven't been. Controlling your perspective is one of Stoicism's most important values. Every interaction we have, every event we go through, every person we meet, even the scenes we view, all receive a value judgment from us. It was either good or awful, dull or enjoyable, beautiful or ugly. Unbeknownst to us, this is an extremely draining practice that might negatively impact our lives. For instance, judging every interaction you have had on a difficult day makes the day in general seem much worse. If you describe a party you attended as boring, that's all it will be. That one dull moment throughout your week. We frequently allow our emotions to dictate our early assessments of things, which implies that they are probably not totally unbiased. Additionally, we have a propensity to speak in metaphors and exaggerations that make situations appear worse, which goes hand in hand with our predisposition to criticize every minute of our lives. If your spouse leaves you, you could refer to your ex as having broken your heart, rather than admitting that they no longer feel the same way about you. Your feelings are influenced by the way you think and speak. The way you unknowingly choose to think about the incident, rather than the event itself, is what gives you negative feelings. In contrast, the Stoics advise individuals to use caution while making decisions and to carefully consider all they experience. One approach to being careful is to reverse your judgments, which simply means to look past them, be able to forget your initial instinct, and view anything through a more positive and rational lens. You may try to reframe that dull party as an opportunity to explore a different location and interact with some new people, Make an effort not to judge others. Afterward, you could realize that nobody truly connected with you, but you didn't go into the situation expecting anything bad to happen. The best way to begin retraining your perspective on life is 
To practice not judging everything based on your first impulses and feelings. Every time you have an opinion on something, try to ask yourself, is this rational? What is the foundation for my opinion? Is there a more accurate or optimistic interpretation of this? Marcus Aurelius emphasized that damages can only exist if they are thought of as such. This implies that each difficult event you have had looks more difficult than you think it is. As a result, you are in total control of the degree to which certain circumstances influence you. The Stoics also remind you to look for the opportunity or source of good in any negative event. The task known as turning the obstacle upside down is a method of developing a Stoic perspective. For example, you could experience dissatisfaction if a new employee is a slow learner and their errors reduce the company's profitability. This employee gets in the way of your efforts to be successful, efficient, and profitable. But this situation can also present an opportunity for good. You will get the chance to develop your patience, become a better instructor, learn how to integrate new employees into the team, and practice handling stressful situations. All of these abilities should help you make more money in the long term and be valuable in the future. On this topic, the classic quote from Marcus goes, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Overall, if you take the time to look at things objectively rather than exaggerating what you see, you can discover that life is simpler and clearer than you had previously imagined. Every scenario can be seen more positively or negatively. After you make the necessary mental adjustments, nothing will annoy you as much as it did, and you will navigate life much more successfully. Lesson 2. Learn to control your emotions. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to refrain from allowing our feelings to overcome what our minds are telling us. Put an end to your hypocrisy, selfishness, and irritability. It seems reasonable that acting irrationally is frequently represented as being in sharp contrast to acting out of emotion. Nothing may impair our judgment more than our own feelings. Therefore, if you wish to think properly at all times, one of the most crucial abilities to develop is the capacity to regulate your emotions. Marcus Aurelius believed that rage, in particular, does more harm than good. Contrary to common opinion, trying to regulate your emotions does not entail suppressing them. When you experience strong anger as a result of a betrayal, you cannot suppress it by denying it to yourself or others or by acting as though everything is okay. No matter how far inside you put the anger, it will still be present. According to the Stoics, regulating emotions like rage is accomplished by channeling them in a different direction. Therefore, when you next feel angry, consider what you can do with it. Although it may be tempting, can yelling at the person who injured you make things any better for you? Will it make the person you were deceived by any better? In other words, consider what you are inclined to do, then consider whether it is useful. If not, Look for constructive ways to communicate your feelings. Perhaps if you gently discuss your feelings with the person who injured you and attempt to understand their perspective, you can get better outcomes. You may also write in a notebook, work out, play a video game, or do anything else that could help you release your anger eventually. Take anxiety or fear as an additional example. Although you can't just push it down, you can redirect it. Instead of allowing anxiety to paralyze you, you can use this anxiety to encourage yourself, go do things that make you feel it, and observe its presence throughout. Let's assume you are too afraid to request a raise from your employer. Many individuals use this kind of anxiety as an excuse to avoid taking action and give in to their fears. Others might be able to handle it and view their worry as something that has to be suppressed and ignored since it is getting in the way of moving forward. Neither though has to be the case. Instead, you may express your fear in a healthy way, and it might even be beneficial. For instance, this anxiety causes you to contemplate everything that may go wrong, which may cause you to think about all the questions your supervisor might ask, all the arguments they might make against you, and how to reply. You may prepare yourself for them and create a strategy for every circumstance in this way. The fear, however, serves as a powerful motivator to push through to test yourself and to better yourself. To overcome your fear partially because of it, take the step in order to show yourself that where you can. In such a case, you can be conscious of your fear the entire time and say, how awesome that I'm trying this anyway. 
Your capacity to remain cool under pressure and to think clearly and wisely will never be hindered by your emotions if you can easily redirect powerful emotions. The secret to a more calm existence is emotional self-control. Lesson 3. Exercise the dichotomy of control. Marcus Aurelius says, Only you have power over your own mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. The dichotomy of control is the contrast between what we can control and what we cannot. For instance, you have no influence over the climate, the pace of traffic, or the opinions of others. However, you can have some control over your appearance, departure time, and the company that you surround yourself with. Anytime you are in a situation that makes you feel a certain way, ask yourself, what can I control? You should take action on whatever you can influence. Learn to accept and love what you cannot change without letting it influence you. You can quickly clear your thoughts if you can learn to differentiate between these two things and respond accordingly. The Latin phrase, amor fati, or love of fate, is a crucial component of the dichotomy of control. You will always enjoy life if you accept all of the circumstances that it provides. You cannot change your circumstances or avoid fate, but you can decide to enjoy your life no matter what. When you are denied a job you have been applying for for years, you could believe there's no way out of this scenario. You tried to get the job, but you were unsuccessful. In this situation, pretending to love fate is impossible. This is a misconception, though. Investigate what caused the undesirable outcome and utilize it to your advantage to make a positive move rather than seeing the fact that you did not achieve your goal as merely a negative. It's possible that you failed and that's why you weren't hired. In that case, you have some influence over the situation. When a comparable chance presents itself in the future, you may improve upon those shortcomings and give it another shot. Other possibilities include nepotism or a personality conflict with a member of the hiring team as the cause. There's no use becoming outraged over something that has never existed since you never had control over it, which means the chance was never really there. Accepting fate entails detaching oneself from a predetermined conclusion as well as external indicators of success. If, for instance, you want to be a writer and gauge your success based on how many copies of your book are sold, you will allow the arbitrary book market of the time to determine your level of success. However, you are in charge of your success if you decide to gauge it based on your level of satisfaction with the final result or the amount of effort you put into it. So by all means, make sure to do everything you can to reach your goals but never lose sight of the chance that you may not succeed in doing so, and embrace this possibility in advance. One will find themselves calm if they focus exclusively on the things they can control, and make a commitment to accept everything else as it is. Love fate no matter what happens. Lesson 4. Embrace the virtues. Quoting Marcus Aurelius, Delve deep within yourself, for a wellspring of goodness is ready to gush forth if you persist in your quest. A virtue can be thought of as a quality of character, or to put it another way, morally righteous conduct. Such actions are advantageous to you, the people around you, and the greater good. Stoicism believes in an interconnected cosmos in which everything and everyone is linked. As a result, what helps the greater good eventually benefits you. Thus, the Stoics felt that individuals who were most in tune with reason were those who committed themselves to the greater good. In other words, they practice their virtues. The absence of good behavior, on the other hand, is attributed to ignorance by the Stoics. When life throws you into unexpected situations, virtues may be your guiding lights, keeping you on track and grounded. This is why those who are best gifted with virtue frequently exude peace and tranquility. To be virtuous, one must internalize Stoicism's four cardinal virtues, knowledge, justice, bravery, and temperance. Wisdom is the ability to distinguish between what is good, what is bad, what is neutral, and everything in between. It means letting reason dictate what is ethically correct, rather than emotions. When faced with a problem, knowledge enables you to weigh both possibilities objectively. Justice depends on wisdom, which is an allegiance to what is fair and equal for both oneself and others. The Stoics saw it as a duty to oneself, one's fellow people, and society as a whole. Courage. The third virtue allows people to act even when they are afraid. It motivates you to act for the greater good or complete activities despite the uncertainty of the consequences. 
Courage does not imply the absence of fear, desire, or anxiety, but rather the deliberate decision to keep going and conquer emotional boundaries. Temperance, temperance often known as moderation, refers to keeping a balanced route between extremes. It requires self-control, restriction, and discipline. Temperance prioritizes long-term well-being over short-term pleasure. Consider this simple example, a bag of chips. Consuming the full bag may provide temporary pleasure, but it jeopardizes health and even mood. Temperance in this context is halting after a few bites. Wisdom is useful in determining how much to consume before quitting. Stoicism divides objects and behaviors into three categories, good, evil, and indifference. Seeking the good, avoiding evil, and accepting indifference were fundamental values. Deviating from these values was connected with encouraging evil, for example, stealing, rudeness, and recklessness, or refraining from good. Indifferent behaviors, such as a leisurely stroll, accomplished neither. These principles provide more than simply personal improvement. They cultivate a condition of calm composure. Aligning your activities with these characteristics assures that you constantly travel the road of righteousness, led by reason, and so create a calm mind. Lesson 5. Embrace a broader perspective. Marcus Aurelius brilliantly reflects Plato's wisdom in our final quote. Whenever you want to talk about people, it's best to take a bird's eye view and see everything all at once. Adopting a broader perspective is a crucial part of attaining mental clarity. In the middle of life's rush and bustle, we frequently find ourselves consumed by every concern. Each struggle feels as if it holds the weight of the world. Consider yourself in a small group of people. It may look like the entire city is drowning in traffic. However, adjusting your perspective a few steps away might show an altogether different world. In essence, when we separate and observe the enormous tapestry of our universe and life, we realize how insignificant our own experiences are in the larger scheme of things. This shift in viewpoint reveals the vast environment that lies beyond our immediate communication. People frequently forget the fact that their own experiences and perspectives aren't the only ones worthy of attention, even within their own lives. Consider someone who has had a bad experience with pets. Unless people deliberately embrace the potential of different experiences, they may find it difficult to comprehend that dogs may be valued friends to others. It's important to take a step back now and again and ask yourself, what am I missing or failing to understand? This introspective practice has several advantages. Consider the possibility of having to choose between staying in your current position or seeking a newly open opportunity elsewhere. Such a choice may appear difficult, especially if you are unsure whether either alternative will meet your goals. While your current position provides security and you are nervous about the increased duties that come with a promotion, the allure of a higher salary entices you. You may feel trapped in this situation. However, beneath the surface, there is a wealth of untapped potential. Have you considered going into a whole other industry or starting a side business to go alongside your current job? Perhaps you can shift your attention away from less enticing tasks by immersing yourself in a hobby. It's absolutely possible that many untapped paths in life are going unnoticed by you. Adopting a broad perspective rather than focusing primarily on present problems helps greatly in making informed decisions. Broadening your scope is useful not only for choosing priorities, but also for forming your thoughts in order to build a complete judgment. It is critical to analyze all aspects and options in a particular circumstance. Furthermore, standing back means removing yourself from personal prejudices and opinions. Momentarily giving up your goals might provide a new perspective, encouraging you to think about others around you and your duties to them. In the heat of the moment, an action like littering may appear unimportant. When you pause and broaden your view to include the entire globe, and the possible implications if everyone followed this example, the insignificance of your tendency to litter becomes shockingly apparent in comparison to the planet's well-being. As previously said, the Stoics believed that everything in the world is interrelated, and that the well-being of the world increases your personal well-being. Thus, when faced with a decision, difficulty, challenge, or change in life, it is extremely important to take a step back and look at the world as a whole rather than just your life. You can internally ask yourself some questions, either now or at a later moment. For example, when going for a stroll or vlogging about your day. This was something Aurelius was really fond of. 
The most typical questions to ask oneself are, what are the long-term consequences of my decision or action? How may someone else's point of view be different from mine? Do I know someone in a comparable circumstance or with comparable objectives to mine who might help me? Does my decision or action have an impact on my well-being? Does it have an impact on the well-being of others around me? Is there anything else I should think about? Taking the time to consider all aspects of the world helps you understand your actions, thoughts, life, and choices more clearly. And it helps you in the way that it allows you to help the world. When you consider the whole picture, you will always have an overseeing view that leaves you free from unnecessary restraint, bias, or doubt. That was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope this video has given you the tools to improve your mindset. Please subscribe if you want to see more. Is there anything missing that you would love to see next? Please let us know in the comments section. If you have watched the video until the end, please respond with MMM, Master Motivational Mindset, so we can connect. Want to see more? On screen, the next video will come up that could help you further in your stoic and personal journey. Check it out. Those hub sequences are helping us close deals faster than ever. Q4 is going to be a big deal. Q4 is going to be huge. Gigantic. Massive. This just in. Q4 is massive. Exactly. Welcome to the full guide on how to implement stoicism into your own life. In this video, we'll walk you through the essential principles and practices of Stoic Philosophy, helping you cultivate wisdom, resilience, and inner peace. Let's start. Find out how the ancient philosophy of Stoicism can help you control your feelings and live a happier, more fulfilling life. Did you know that Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that was started in Athens around 300 BCE, has grown in favor over the past few years as a way to deal with the problems of modern life. A well-known research institute did a poll and found that more than 70% of people said that bringing stoic ideas to their daily lives helped them. It gives a unique view on how to live a full and worthwhile life. It focuses on developing character. Mindfulness helps people build up their emotional strength and mental toughness. Self-reflection by knowing what we can change and what we can't. This brief explains how stoicism helps us find inner peace even when the world around us is a mess. We will look at where stoicism came from and what its main ideas are. We'll look at how it can be used in different parts of our lives. From making decisions to letting go, We'll talk about how to live a more healthy and happy life. Join us. As we start this journey of learning and peace through the ageless wisdom of Stoicism Part 1, where Stoicism came from. The roots of Stoicism can be found in ancient Greece. Greece, where this deep theory was first developed and won the hearts and minds of many people. Zeno of Citium came up with the idea of Stoicism in the early 3rd century BC. The Stoics thought that the lessons of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, as well as his own, were the best way to live. That the main goal of life is to be happy by living in harmony with nature and reason. Stoicism became popular in the Roman state, especially among these Stoic philosophers, who include Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, put an emphasis on the They think that the way to real happiness is through self-discipline, inner peace, and spiritual morality. That things outside of a person shouldn't affect their happiness or peace of mind. Stoics also put a lot of importance on building a good character. They thought that virtue was things like knowledge and courage, moderation and fairness were important to live a good life according to what they taught. Having a good life meant that your deeds were in line with your beliefs. With general values, instead of being influenced by their own wants or forces from the outside, self-control and staying uninterested in what's going on around you. Outside of our control, Stoics tried to develop an unshakable sense of calm in the face of life's problems this 
Philosophy tells us to pay attention to our own ideas and deeds. Stoics don't worry about things they can't change as they move on to the next part. Theory of virtue. It's easy to see how important these qualities are for understanding Stoicism's main ideas. Part 2. The Stoic View of Good Behavior. Imagine a life in which you don't have to worry about. This is not the case in Stoicism, where you don't have to worry about being good or decent at all. Most important is the idea of character. In Stoicism, honor means moral greatness is made up of things like knowledge, courage, fairness, and self-discipline. The Stoics thought that these traits were necessary for a good life. Stoic thought virtue is seen as the best thing and the reason why people live. The Stoics thought that the only way to be truly happy is to work on developing good traits. The Stoics stressed that virtue is something that should be practiced constantly in every part of one's life. They think that developing character is up to us and can be done through reason and self-discipline. Situations outside of our control shouldn't tell us what to do or affect how happy we are. By following the idea, people can focus on building their character and living in harmony with nature. Even when things are hard, a person with character can find peace and calm. The Stoics think that people can get through life's challenges if they have good traits like knowledge and self-control. In its basic form, the Stoic theory of virtue tells us to face problems with courage and calm. The day you get your Clear Choice dental implants makes every day a let's dig in day, a take a big bite day, a love my new teeth day, because a Clear Choice day changes every day. Schedule a free consultation. That the only way to be truly happy is to live by moral standards, no matter what the world throws at you. At us, if we focus on building good qualities like knowledge, bravery, kindness, and discipline of oneself. Now that this is clear, we can find peace within ourselves. How about we talk about the... The dichotomy of control is a big part of Stoicism. It refers to the question, what can you control and can't be taken care of? Part three, the two types of control what can be handled and what can't, accept the idea of the difference between control and figure out what we can change and what we can't. Stoic theory says that there are. There are things in life that we can control and change, and there are also things that we can't. This difference is important for living a good life in the world of things we can control. Control the way we think, feel, and act. These are the parts of who we are. We can shape and lead ourselves toward good ends by becoming more self-aware and self-discipline lets us choose how to react to outside events and keep our inner peace. On the other hand, there are many things that are out of a person's control, things outside of our power, like the views of other people, nature tragedies, or even accidents. Stoicism tells us not to waste time thinking about things outside of our control and instead to focus on how we handle them. By accepting what we can't change, we get rid of things we don't need to worry about. Being sad and finding tranquility in the middle of chaos, figuring out this dichotomy, helps us focus on what's most important and acquire traits like wisdom. Be brave, fairness, and moderation. We know that real happiness comes from, instead of looking for approval from others or depending on things we can't control, we should work on developing these traits in ourselves. As we move on to the next section about how to use awareness and stoicism, it's clear that the first part was A. It's clear that if we accept the idea of the split of power, we set up a strong foundation for getting what we want. Let's look at the ways in which being aware can help us take control of our thoughts. Being fully present in the here and now might help us get past problems. The fourth part, clarity and composure, 
is about how to practice awareness and stoicism. Practicing mindfulness in our daily lives gives us a chance to learn more about our thinking, feelings and actions that help us deal with problems with clarity and confidence. Peace of mind. Mindfulness is an important part of stoicism because it lets us do things like, by bringing conscious awareness to the moment, we can watch our inner experiences without judging them or getting attached to them. Present time, we can stop caring about what's going on around us and focus on what is. When we practice awareness, we learn to watch our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them. We don't have to get caught up in them. Instead of acting on impulse or letting bad feelings take over, we can take a step back. Objectively look at the situation at hand. This helps us act wisely instead of acting on impulse. Mindfulness also helps us avoid acts that might make the problem worse. Notice trends in the way we think and feel by keeping an eye on these patterns. We can learn about repeated thought patterns or harmful ideas that might be holding us back from growing. With this knowledge, we have the chance to question and change these thoughts in a more positive way. Mindfulness practice also makes it easier to fully appreciate the present moment. Engage with the present moment by giving each event your full attention. Savor the moment, whether it's a simple daily job or a big event in our lives. Find the beauty in life and be thankful even when things are hard. This will help you build endurance and mental strength. Stability. We'll talk about how stoicism tells us to see problems as opportunities. I should finish work as one. Goodbye saints, you are done. Chance to grow instead of something to avoid or fight against. Section 5. Building up your strength. Building strength and mental health is like making a shield against the storms of life that gives us the strength and grace to get through them. Stoicism teaches us that we can get better at these things if we work at it. Resilience is a term for how we deal with problems. Resilience is the ability to get back up when things go wrong, and mental stability is the ability to stay calm and balanced. One way to build resilience is to keep an open mind no matter what is going on around you. Accepting the idea of love. Fadi, which means love of fate, means to accept what is. Whatever happens, see it as essential and learn from it instead of trying to stop it or complaining about it. Chances to get better, we can train our minds to do well in the face of trouble. Stoic practices like negative vision also help us get ready for challenges by making us think about what could go wrong. Practicing how we would deal with them. By practicing awareness and detachment, you can keep your emotions stable. From outside factors, Stoics tell us to pay attention to what we can control. Our thoughts. Thoughts and deeds, instead of focusing too much on things we can't change by realizing that outside events are neutral and don't define us, happiness or a sense of worth. We can build inner strength that isn't affected by the ups and downs of life. Downs is another important part of being grateful and appreciative. Stoic philosophy says that we can be happy by putting our attention on what we have instead of what we don't. In the present, this sense of thanks helps us keep things in perspective when things are hard. Even though we face problems, we have a lot in our lives. Building grit and emotional security takes work. Effort and practice can be turned into stoic ideals, like amor fati, being aware with detachment and thanks, can protect ourselves from the storms of life while keeping a steady sense of peace and calm. Before we move on to the next part about developing thanks, let's learn more about this practice. Improves our ability to deal with life's problems. Part 6. Learning to be thankful and 
appreciation. Gratitude and appreciation help us see the beauty in the world. Even in the smallest moments, make a medley of happiness and joy. When we choose to be grateful, we change our focus from what we don't have to what we do have. Acknowledging and appreciating the good things in our lives every day helps us stay strong. Us create a happy attitude by noticing the good things in our lives. We can deal with problems better. Of optimism and hope. This point of view tells us that even in the worst situations, there are always bright spots. Allows us to get over failures more easily, as long as we are thankful for the lessons we've learned along the way. How praise also makes us feel better emotionally. When we take the time to enjoy the people, places and things that make us happy, we feel fulfilled. We become less depending on things outside of ourselves to make us happy. We are happy because we know that true happiness comes from within. Practicing thanks makes our relationships with others stronger. Saying thank you to loved ones is a great way to do this. It helps people feel closer to each other and gives them a sense of love and bonding. Us to let them know how important they are to us and it inspires them to do the same by growing. With thanks and respect, we open ourselves up to living life to the fullest. The key is to accept both victories and setbacks with grace as we move from one stage to the next. Let's look at how these methods can be used to bring philosophical ideas to relationships. Strengthen our relationships without giving up our inner peace. Section 7. Using Stoic Ideas in Relationships Use conservative ideas to make your relationships stronger. Stoicism can help you make stronger relationships and keep your inner peace. By using Stoic ideas, we can learn how to handle our interactions with knowledge and equality. Ideals like focusing on what we can change and accepting that life will always have ups and downs one important part of Stoicism is to make your relationships better and more satisfying. In relationships is realizing we can't control what other people do or how they feel. Instead of trying to change or control others, we should pay attention to our. This means taking responsibility for our own thoughts, emotions and actions. By being aware of our own responses and working on self-awareness, we can avoid. Accepting that relationships are naturally complicated is another important thing to keep in mind. People who come and go in and out of our lives do so for different reasons. Point. Knowing that everything is temporary helps us enjoy the present and treasure the time we have with. It also helps us let go of goals or ties that can hold us back lead to failure or pain. Stoicism teaches us to be grateful in our relationships. Admiration. We can show thanks by noticing the good things about. Our connections and letting the people who make our lives better know how much we appreciate them. This change in attitude creates a stronger sense of connection and putting stoic ideas into practice in our relationships helps us build stronger ties. Handle these relationships with more knowledge, acceptance, and gratitude. If we show gratitude, we can make stronger relationships and keep our intercom at the same time. If we are ready to accept that everything changes, we can pay more attention to what we can control. Practice, and when we learn to be thankful, now let's. Study how Stoicism relates to the goal of happiness in section 8, happiness. In our last conversation, we talked about how stoic ideas can be used in relationships. Now, let's talk about another part of stoicism, which is the value of self-control and reason. Stoicism teaches us that true happiness has nothing to do with how hard you try to find it. Lies inside of us and can be reached by living in harmony with nature and developing values like as long as we have knowledge, courage, temperance and justice, we can live in peace.
The Stoics said that outward events don't affect whether or not a person is happy. Our happiness. Instead, our own thoughts and decisions determine our mental well-being. Viewpoint. We stop depending on outside things to make us happy and instead look for support. We don't focus on getting things from other people or buying things. With patience and strength, we learn to enjoy the simple things in life, the present moment. But it's important to remember that stoicism doesn't mean you should hide your feelings or, instead of ignoring that they exist, it pushes us to recognize and understand them. By keeping a clear head and practicing awareness and self-reflection, we can gain a better understanding of ourselves. With this grounding and stoic mindset, we can learn more about ourselves and handle the ups and downs of life better. Pleasure being something we make for ourselves instead of something we get from other things. Fulfillment. Let's look at how stoicism helps us deal with hard times without losing sight of what's important to us. Section 9 of Sense of Intercom is about the stoic way of dealing with problems, meeting life's problems head on. Stoics tell us that the best way to keep our inner peace is to see problems as opportunities. Instead of seeing hard times as obstacles to be avoided or as something to be got ten over, denied, the Stoic method tells us to face them with a sense of toughness and acceptance. Philosophy tells us that bad things happen to everyone and that we can deal with them better by accepting them with grace and... The Stoic lessons stress how important it is to develop strength and knowledge. By moving our attention to what we can control instead of letting outside circumstances take over, view from what we can't change to what we can. This gives us the power to act and make a difference. Stoicism teaches us to let go of things we can't control when we're going through hard times. Stoics, on the other hand, stress the power of our own ideas and deeds, push us to see losses as chances to grow as people. They believe that meeting Charles Lengers, we can become better versions of ourselves if we face problems head on and learn from them. Problems act as a catalyst for growth because they test our character and help us get ready for what's to come. By taking this calm approach to problems, we can get through them. We can handle the unavoidable ups and downs of life better if we embrace obstacles as chances to learn and grow, not as sources of stress or worry. In the next part, we learn how to look at life more objectively. Using stoic ideas to deal with stress and worry, we'll look at ways to put these ideas into practice. Philosophy in Everyday Life, Part 10. Dealing with Stress and Worry by Stoic Principles. If we adopt a stoic way of thinking, we can learn to deal with life's ups and downs. Ups and downs with intercom and resilience are things that stoicism teaches. Understanding this theory lets us know that worry and stress are caused by how we think about and respond to events. To deal with worry well, the first step is to realize what we can control. Stoics think that the mind is the only thing we can control. We can't change our thoughts or feelings. We can't control what happens, but we can choose how we see and react to it. Mindfulness and self-awareness make it possible to watch our thoughts without judging them. Choose actions that are good for you and accept that things outside of you will change. Stoics taught that everything is temporary, which helps us let go of things. Last but not least, Stoicism urges people to focus on what's important. Personal growth is more important than living in a good way and making good decisions. Even when things are hard, outward approval makes people happy. Stoic ideas and stories can help you deal with stress and anxiety. In a word, this means recognizing that you have control over your life, their thoughts and feelings, accepting that everything is temporary and focusing on. 
Taking these ideas to heart will help you find peace within yourself. The talk will be about stoicism and practicing self-discipline as ways to help personal growth. Of what will be talked about in the next few lines. Stoicism and art of self-discipline. When we learn the art of self-discipline, we can develop inner strength. Self-discipline is at the heart of stoicism. It helps people gain strength and grow as people. By following this attitude, people can face life's problems with courage and fortitude. With self-discipline, we learn how to control our wants and emotions. Stoicism stresses the importance of being able to think things through and make choices that are in line with our morals and long-term goals. Learning to stop caring about what other people do and how it affects you is a key part of self-discipline. We know that there are many things outside of our control, such as what other people do, people or events that we can't control. Stoicism tells us to keep our focus on the things we can change, like our own ideas, attitudes and actions, a need for approval or success from others usually accompanied by worry and stress. But if we change how we look at things, now that they didn't have to deal with these bad feelings, Stoics stressed how important it was to form good habits. Self-discipline. We can improve our willpower and get past problems by practicing self-discipline over and over again. Set clear goals and make daily routines that support those goals to break bad habits or addictions. Stoics not only teach themselves how to be self-disciplined, but they also teach others how to do so. Advocates for simplicity in material belongings and income. They think that too much connection to things and money is unhealthy. Material things can make people unhappy and cause them to suffer needlessly. Stoics tell us to be happy with what we have. Focusing on good things about ourselves, like knowledge, courage, justice. As we move on to the next part, which is called the Stoic view on temperance, we'll talk about. It's important to remember that Stoicism teaches us important lessons about how to deal with money and belongings. Focus on what's inside instead of what's outside section 12. The Stoic view on Matrial. The more we learn about Stoicism and the art of self-discipline, the less we care about things and money. Now we'll talk about how the Stoics felt about wealth and material things. Stoics thought that real happiness doesn't come from things outside of yourself. They said that depending on material things for happiness is a sure way to be unhappy. According to the Stoics, Things like happiness and sadness are always going to change. Wealth and worldly things have nothing to do with virtue, and they should be viewed as such. It's not wrong to be rich or to have material things, but they shouldn't be the center of our lives. Instead, Stoics stressed how important it was to define our sense of self-worth by developing inequalities like knowledge, courage, justice, and self-control. Stoic philosophy tells us that putting too much value on things outside of ourselves can cause us to become attached to and dependent on those things. When we depend on these things alone for our happiness, we leave ourselves open to their loss or destruction. By comparison, when we try to be good and focus on what's inside us, when we get things like moral character and personal growth, we find permanent happiness that can't be taken away. By knowing the difference between what we can control and what we can't, our own thoughts and acts versus things that happen to us that we can't change. Stoicism helps us get to a place where we care less about things. This detachment from our things helps us face life's challenges with more equanimity and strength. As we learn more about Stoicism and the lessons it has to teach us about how to deal with change, part 13, Stoicism and accepting things as they are. Stoics try to be happy even though they know that everything changes. Stoicism 
teaches us to find comfort in accepting that everything in life is temporary. Everything in this world is temporary and it can change at any time. We should let go of our ties because nothing lasts forever. Instead, we should let go of our connection to the outside world and work on growing our. By understanding that life is short-lived, we free ourselves from needless stress and worry. We know from our own pain that trying to hold on to things or people will only lead to anger and failure. When things get away from us, as they always do, Stoics argue for, taking each moment as it comes, knowing it could be our last. When we understand that everything is temporary, we can enjoy the present moment more deeply. Our temporary, we become more aware of the beauty and wealth of. With each passing <coughs> second, we learn not to take anything for granted and to find joy in even the even the easiest pleasures can be made more enjoyable by remembering that life is short. Stoicism teaches us that we're going to die and it tells us to live with a sense of what's important. Knowing that time is limited and having a sense of urgency and purpose is better than spending time on. Stoics tell us not to worry about small things or chase after shallow wants. Morality and wisdom are what really count. In a word, Stoicism gives us the knowledge too. See how important it is to accept that reality changes. Once we accept this, we can find comfort in it, knowing that nothing lasts forever, and instead choose to live each moment to the fullest. In the next line, we'll talk about how Stoicism can help you live each moment to the best. Help people find meaning and purpose in life, even if they don't rely on anything outside of themselves. Factors that affect whether or not they are satisfied or validated in section 14, finding meaning. Through the lessons of Stoicism, we can learn about the meaning and goal of Stoicism. Stoicism teaches us that the only way to give our lives more real meaning and purpose is to look at the world as it really is. Real happiness doesn't come from other people or their surroundings, but from within ourselves. Focus on the things we can do something about, and accept with serenity the things we can't. By thinking this way, we can build a better world that goes beyond what we can do alone. Sense of purpose and meaning that is not affected by what is happening in the outside world. Stoicism stresses living in harmony with nature and with other people. Stoics believe that the highest good is being a good person in everything you do. Work on improving our moral character to find happiness and satisfaction in life. This means making it a goal. Lead a life that is full of knowledge, courage, kindness, and self-discipline. Encourages us to be good, but it also tells us to be aware and thankful in our daily lives. Even the most boring things in our lives can have value if we look for it. Practice being fully present in every moment and enjoy the simple pleasures that life has to offer. To offer stern ways like negative imagery, which is picturing the worst things that could happen. Losing something or someone close to us can also make us value what we have. Stoicism can help you feel more grateful and grow a stronger sense of gratitude if you do this. Finding meaning and purpose through Stoicism takes a change in perspective. Focus from outside accomplishments or goods to inner qualities like virtue. By focusing on what really means to us and being aware and grateful can find a deep sense of meaning that isn't based on temporary situations or material wealth as we do. If you learn more about Stoicism and how it relates to the practice of detachment, section 15 makes it clear how these lessons can help us find more peace of mind and mental strength. During our study of Stoicism, we talked about Stoicism and the practice of detachment. We have looked at the many ways this old theory can help us live happy, successful lives. We've learned that inner peace and a sense of meaning and purpose go hand in hand. 
When we accept the things we can't change and focus on the things we can, we can learn to be happy. Stoicism, on the other hand, gives us not only a way to deal with the things we can change, but also a way to live our lives. It gives people not only a way to deal with life's problems, but also a way to distance themselves from those problems. When? When talking about Stoicism, the idea of detachment does not mean becoming mentally numb, mental distance from other people. Instead, it means letting go of our ties to the Stoics are people who think that happiness can be found no matter what happens in the outside world or what other people do. When happiness comes from within and isn't based on things that come from the outside, learn to take whatever life throws at us with calm and without letting happiness or sadness take over. We should make the practice of detachment a normal part of our lives. The practice of detachment helps us stay calm and in control. Unshaken by life's ups and downs, it teaches us to pay attention to what really matters. Matters our own thoughts, deeds and ideals, instead of letting outside. By practicing detachment, we can build strength in the face of things we can't change. This part of Stoicism teaches people how to stay calm in the face of trouble and keep a sense of humor. Us, for one of its most important lessons, the Stoic view on death and mortality. Chapter 16 of the Stoic. Stoic philosophy is a way of thinking about death and dying. Becomes a gentle wave that takes us into the unknown, like a ship floating out into the vast and strange sea. Stoicism gives us a unique way to think about death and our own existence. Us to face the fact that we will die and find comfort in the fact that it will happen. From a Stoic point of view, death is not something to be afraid of or try to avoid. Sometimes I dream about you Falling through the sky Can't hardly Disasters don't take a break for the holidays. With your help, neither does the Red Cross. Stoics thought that everything in life is temporary and open to change. They saw this as a normal part of the world. They taught us, among other things, that death is just a return to nature. This view of death gives us freedom from the troubles of life and the limits of our mortal bodies accept and even enjoy the fact that we only have a short time on earth it tells us to live every day to the fullest and make the most of every moment we should enjoy every moment we have instead of worrying about what comes after this life stoicism tells us to pay attention to living well in the present by recognizing that we will die and accepting it as an important part of being human when we have a clearer idea of what we want out of life, we are better able to go after it, more aware of what really counts in our relationships, gifts to society, and most importantly, to our own growth as people. So Stoicism gives us a new way to look at death, one that doesn't see it as the end of the world, not as something to fear or avoid but as a chance to grow as a person and think about oneself. There is a place in the world where we can live more worthwhile lives, full of meaning and satisfaction, if we are ready to accept our own death and act in a good way. In the light of this, we can learn more about how it links to Stoicism's focus on good behavior. When we know more about these ideas about death as seen through the eyes of Stoicism, Section 17. Stoicism and the value of doing good things are the keys to a happy life. Stoicism tells us that the only way to be truly happy is to live by good ideals. Happiness and satisfaction do not come from outside events or things. Morality, according to the Stoics, lies not in what other people do, but in how we treat ourselves. 
Stoicism says that happiness is the best thing and should be sought above all else. Living a socially righteous life in every aspect of our lives. Us to work on things like being wise, brave and self-disciplined. If we act in a way that is consistent with these, we can live a life of moral character and harmony. Values. Stoicism points out that it's not enough to just be good. We have to turn our thoughts, ideas or plans into actions. Stoicism tells us that the things we do shape who we are and decide what kind of person we become. Take responsibility for our decisions and try to live according to our morals by acting in ways that are good. Ideals. We can find meaning and purpose even in the worst situations. Stoicism teaches us that we can't change things outside of ourselves, but we can change how we react to them. Is up to us. By doing good things, we can make ourselves stronger. Stoics say that it's our strength of character that lets us handle life's ups and downs with grace and equanimity. Mindset. Doing good things is something you have to work at. To live a life full of value, you need to think about yourself often. We need self-discipline and a strong commitment to our own growth. We can only develop inner serenity and live a worthwhile life based on moral duty if we take steps to do so. Now, let's learn more about Stoic ethics. Stoics tried to live by good ideas and put them into practice. Section 18 of Stoic Ethics looks at the idea of moral duty and moral responsibility leading up to the idea of moral responsibility. Stoic ethics show us how we shape our own character and fate. Stoicism says that we are not helpless victims of fate, but rather active partners in making it. In the course of our lives, what we do and choose has effects, and it's up to us to deal with them. Stoic ethics show how important it is for us to be good and take responsibility for our choices. Every part of our lives should be guided by knowledge and virtue, not by passion and feeling. Life, we are told to acquire qualities like knowledge, courage, fairness, and self-control. Traits are like a road plan that show us how to make choices that are in line with morals. We can develop a strong moral character that is in line with the rules of nature if we always do things like Stoicism emphasizes these traits, but it also admits that humans make mistakes. Humans who make mistakes when we think too quickly or act without thinking. Stoics think that it's important to admit when we're wrong and take responsibility for them. The only way to be truly free is to accept our moral obligations and try to do the right thing. Improving ourselves through self-reflection and self-discipline is part of our moral duty. Stoic ethics teach us that how we treat others is just as important as how we treat ourselves. We have a job to treat others with justice, kindness and respect. Care about the well-being of those around us and try to get along with them. Because Stoic principles were based on kindness and understanding, the we can see the importance of moral duty in how it makes us who we are and what our lives will be like. If we understand our natural frailty, we can actively work to make the world a better place for ourselves and others. People, while also accepting the good things about being human, like knowledge and courage. Fairness and self-control are important, but now let's look at how Stoics find inner peace. Tranquility, Chapter 19. Stoic Practices for Inner Peace and Tranquility. Chapter 20. Tranquility. We can find inner peace and calm by using simple Stoic methods that give us the power to take charge of our feelings and find peace despite the chaos around us. Stoicism is a set of routines and ideas that can help us get what we want out of life. Even when things are hard, we can be in a state of peace and calm if we are in charge of our own lives. Stoics said we shouldn't waste our time or energy thinking about our wants. 
We shouldn't worry about things we can't change. Instead, we should only worry about things we can change. By coming to terms with this idea, we can keep ourselves from having unhealthy thoughts. Instead of focusing on the effects of outside events, we should work on cultivating good traits like knowledge, fairness, courage and hard work are also very important. This means picturing the worst case events so we can be ready for them. By thinking about loss or trouble before it happens, we prepare ourselves mentally for what might come. Stoics also stressed how important it was to stay calm and strong in tough situations. Mindfulness and living in the present moment by fully connecting with our current experiences without thinking about. We can grow a sense of inner peace by letting go of regrets from the past or worries about the future. Peace and happiness. Practicing thanks also has a big impact on role in Stoic philosophy by thinking about the good things in our lives often. We learn to be grateful for things big and small, and this helps us. In a word, Stoic habits can help you keep things in perspective when things are hard. That can be used to try to find inner peace and harmony so we can deal with the problems life throws at us. Throws at us with more peace of mind if we focus on the parts of our lives that we can directly control. If we train ourselves to be aware of the here and now, and if we also learn to appreciate what we have, these activities are the building blocks for growing the traits of courage and the next part, section 20, will talk about courage. In our study of Stoicism, we looked at Stoicism and the values of courage and fortitude. Practices for inner peace and calmness we have looked at different. Let's now turn our attention to the traits of confidence and fortitude, which are based on this old idea, lie at the heart of Stoicism. But courage in the framework of Stoicism doesn't just mean. It includes more than just physical bravery in the face of danger. It also includes mental courage, the ability to stick to one's beliefs and act in a good way even when things don't go as planned. Stoics think that real strength lies in being strong in the face of trouble or temptation. Fortitude is similar to courage in that it helps people stay calm and strong when life gets hard, but focuses on how the Stoics teach us to be patient and strong. By building up our resolve, we can see problems as chances to grow instead of giving up or getting angry can build the kind of mental strength that lets us deal with life's expected challenges with grace and respect. By practicing these qualities, we can develop a sense of inner power and calm that can't be shaken. External situations, instead of giving in to fear or giving up because of hard times, as we go on, we can face them with calm confidence, knowing that they are part of the natural order of things. On our way through Stoicism, let's look at how it thinks about time. This part will show how Stoics feel about how quickly time passes and what gives them comfort. With a variety of craveable flavors, it's easy to do what's delicious. Embracing the present moment, Stoic views on time and the current moment Accept that time is fleeting and throw yourself into the beauty of the present moment because true tranquility can only be found in these brief times. Offers helpful ideas about how we should deal with time and reminds us to make the most of every second. Stoics thought that thinking about mistakes from the past or worrying about what will happen in the future only takes away from the present Stoic thought says that we should fully feel and enjoy the moment. Time is a valuable resource that shouldn't be lost. We shouldn't worry about what's coming next or miss what's already gone. Instead, we should focus on living in the source now. We can reach a state of inner peace by being aware of our thoughts and behaviors in the present moment. 
Stoic views on time also stress the value of happiness and accepting that it will change is the same as accepting that everything, including ourselves, can change. This understanding sets us free because it lets us let go of ties and demands, us from needless pain caused by holding to things that are doomed to disappear. Stoic ideals mean to treat every moment as a chance to grow and get better. By being aware and in the moment, we can learn from everything. Experience that life gives us, whether it's happy or hard, every moment can teach us something. In a word, knowing that time passes makes us more likely to look for comfort in things that will last. The here and now, instead of getting stuck in regrets about what has happened in the past, or we can give people a sense of peace when they are worried about what the future holds. We can learn more about ourselves and live more worthwhile lives if we pay attention to the present moment. Whole moving on to our next topic about Stoicism's search for knowledge. This focus on being present gives us a solid foundation for trying to learn more about ourselves and the world. Around us, without losing sight of what really matters, this wonderful adventure we call life. Section 22 of Stoicism and the Search for Wisdom shows how the power of learning as we go on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment to figure out what life is all about. Stoicism shows us how to get deep insights into who we really are. Stoic philosophy says that seeking knowledge is the most important part of living a good and happy life. Not just about gathering information or being smart. It's about knowing who you are and what your job is. Stoicism is a way of thinking about the world and how to live in balance with it. Wisdom is the process of getting a deep understanding of how different parts of our lives really work. It gets us thinking about what we can control and what we can't. Focus on building principles like bravery, justice, balance and with the knowledge that comes from having lived, we can deal with the problems that life throws at us. Stoics believe that knowledge will come if we develop these traits through careful thought and hard work. Helps us to see our wants and ties from a different point of view through self-examination and reflection. Can pick out the things that really matter in life. Ethics, inner peace. By adopting knowledge as a way of life, we can separate ourselves from temporary outside conditions and shallow pursuits. A single driving idea in our lives, we can develop a strong sense of focus and purpose. We know that real happiness comes from within, not from the outside world. As we learn more about Stoicism and its ideas, we see that happiness comes from within. In the next part, we'll learn about the art of letting go. Before we do, let's think about how wisdom is an anchor in the middle of life's ups and downs. Uncertainty is a light that leads us to peace, even when we're going through hard times. 23. Stoicism and the Art of Letting Go In our look at Stoicism and the Art of Letting Go, we've looked at how this old theory tells us to pursue knowledge. Seek knowledge and understanding if you want to live a good life. We've learned that wisdom is not just an accumulation of information, educational practice, but rather a way to put what we know to use so we can get around. Let's move forward by facing life's problems with calm and grace. Lessons of Stoicism and look at how they have affected the art of letting go in a big way. Stoicism says that the way to real happiness is to stop caring about how things turn out in the outside world. It forces us to stop trying to change things and instead accept them for what they are. Motorola Razor is bringing a different perspective. Hello, Moto. There are parts of our lives that we have no control over, like the actions of other people or certain settings we might find ourselves in at the moment. 
urges us to develop inner strength to deal with what we face and to accept it with peace. Facts that free us from unnecessary pain and keep us from having to fight against things we can't change. We can find peace even in the middle of chaos if we learn to be detached and accept that everything changes. Everything. So Stoic thinkers tell us to focus on what is under our control. Control, including our ideas, deeds and emotions, instead of being worried about. This change in viewpoint gives us the power to separate ourselves from things we can't change. Learning to let go can help us feel less stressed about the outside world and more at peace with ourselves. Difficult in a world that is always sending us demands and wants. We can get better at making decisions though, if we use calm ideas. In the next part, we'll look at how stoicism can give you a clearer mind and better judgment. Useful advice on how to make good decisions that are in line with our values without being swayed by outside forces. Section 24. Using stoic ideas in situations with stresses or ties. Mastering the art of letting go and making good decisions can be done by using stoic philosophy. When it comes to making decisions, stoicism teaches us to pay attention to what is. When we take care of the things we can and leave the rest to nature. When making a choice, we can use this rule by first figuring out what we can control and what we can't. When we accept that we can't control what happens outside of ourselves, we can change. Stoicism also urges us to make choices based on our own beliefs, virtues and sense of right and wrong. To think about how our decisions will affect us in the long run, instead of letting short-term wants or feelings guide us, should judge each choice based on how well it fits with our moral sense and our general well-being. Another important Stoic concept for making decisions is that we should not act on impulse or give in to social forces. Practice not caring about what happens outside of ourselves instead of caring too much about one thing. We should accept the idea that honor is more about the way things are done than about the end result. Intended results, we become stronger when bad things happen and better able to react. Stoic ideas can be applied to a wider range of unexpected situations. The decision-making process helps us let go of things that aren't good for us. When we choose choices that are in line with our core beliefs and values, it frees us from having to. Letting outside things that we can't change control us instead of letting those things control us. If we turn our attention inward to our own inner traits and personal growth, we can live a life that is rich and full. If we make choices based on knowledge and peace, they will be more fulfilling with these rules and use them as a guide. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about some. How to be a good Stoic and live a worthwhile life. Section 25. Stoic ways of living for. Let's look at some useful Stoic techniques that can help you live a full life. One important habit that can help us live a truly happy life is being helpful. By thinking what it would be like to lose something we love, we learn to value it more and not take it for granted. This exercise helps us be more thankful and keeps us from becoming too addicted to things. The practice of desire is another strong way to get what you want, whether it's things or people. Stoics think that our wants and ties can cause us pain, so they say we should look at our wants. By adopting detachment from outcomes and asking how important they are, Stoics also stress how important it is to let go of sadness and find happiness in the present. Writing or meditation can be used for self-reflection and pondering. This technique lets us look at our thoughts, feelings and behaviors without bias. Allows us to see trends of behavior that may be damaging or ineffective so we can change them. Stoicism urges us to make good changes in our lives 
and to live in harmony with nature. By trying to be moral, we try to make sure that our beliefs and deeds are in line with general concepts like reason, virtue, and justice. If we do our best in all parts of life, we can feel true satisfaction and inner peace. In the end, following quiet habits can help you find peace. Improve our ability to live a life full of meaning and purpose. Able to grow gratitude, find happiness in the present moment, and try to be a good person by living according to the rules of nature. This will lead to a life with purpose and meaning in the long run. Acceptance, constructive visualization, control, a desire for self-reflection, and a commitment to live by the rules of nature. Here are some important lessons from Stoic beliefs to keep in mind every day. Stoics stress the value of building and living by virtues, virtues such as knowledge, courage, fairness, and moderation. Trying to live a good life brings inner peace and makes eudaimonia thrive. Stoicism pushes people to pay attention to things they can control. Things you can control, like your thoughts, attitudes, and deeds, and accept things you can't change, like outside factors or what other people do. Three, learn to control yourself. Stoics believed in self-discipline and self-control. Can live a life that is more reasonable and logical for accepting that things change. Stoics knew that life is temporary and taught that by accepting this fact, you can be happy. We can handle change and trouble better. Build up your strength. Stoicism focuses on building up endurance and the ability to keep going. We can handle problems better if we are mentally strong and can handle problems with calm. Live in harmony with nature. Stoics thought that people should live in harmony with the natural order of things. Universe. Life is better when you live in harmony with nature and follow reason. Stoics encouraged people to practice mindfulness or to be more aware of the moment. Being in the present makes it easier to make good decisions and worry less about the past or the future. Stoics respect social ties and being part of a group. Stressed how important it is to be kind, fair, and considerate to others. Practice gratitude. Being thankful for what we have can take our minds off of what we want, for material things, and more on enjoying the simple things in life. See problems as chances to grow and learn. Stoics saw problems as chances to grow and learn. Misfortune can be a chance to learn how to be strong and resilient. 11. Stoicism tells us that we have the power to decide what to do. By realizing that we have the power to choose how to handle events, we can avoid being taken over by our feelings. 12. Value mental peace more than money and things. Stoics thought that real happiness and wealth come from inner peace and contentment, not from things you can see. Stoic beliefs support a mindset that is not based on wealth or social standing. Life in balance with yourself and the rest of the world, which encourages personal growth and seeking. Satisfaction through good living and self-awareness. These timeless ideas still speak to many people looking to improve their lives and find a greater sense of purpose and tranquility, Stoic Principles A. Philosophical school which began in ancient Greece and grew in Rome, gives useful ideas and useful. In end, Stoicism gives tips on how to live a happy and good life, offers a deep theory that can help us live a happy life by following the ideals of knowledge. With mental toughness and emotional calm, we can deal with the problems of life. With grace and power, we can find inner peace by practicing awareness and letting go. The ideas of Stoicism give us a way to make good choices and be happy no matter what happens.
Stoicism gives us the power to deal with life's uncertainties by helping us focus on what we can control. Live lives with meaning and purpose. Go out and make changes for yourself. Thank you for joining us on this comprehensive journey to implement Stoicism into your life. We hope you found this guide insightful and practical in your quest for a more mindful and resilient existence. Don't miss out on future Stoicism videos and valuable insights to further enhance your life. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest content. Remember, Stoicism is not just a philosophy. It's a way of life that can bring tranquility and wisdom into your daily experiences. Thank you for being a part of our Stoic community. Life is for living. We got this. Let's partner for all of it. Edward Jones. By actively observing and guiding our inner world, we can shape our responses to external events and maintain a sense of composure and clarity. Acceptance is another crucial element of building self-discipline. Developing resilience, as espoused by Aurelius, is cultivated by reframing setbacks as opportunities for growth. By viewing obstacles as stepping stones on our journey, we can develop the strength and perseverance necessary to face adversity with unwavering determination. Resilience also involves maintaining a sense of inner peace and stability even when circumstances are chaotic or unfavorable. To build self-discipline, we can incorporate practical strategies inspired by Aurelius into our lives. By establishing consistent routines, engaging in physical discipline, practicing mindfulness, expressing gratitude, and fostering communal support, all contribute to our growth and development. Ultimately, living a more disciplined and fulfilling life can be achieved by following the Marcus Aurelius principles. We can develop the strength and fortitude to navigate through life's challenges with self-control. As we stand at the crossroads of history and philosophy, the figure of Marcus Aurelius towers above, casting a long shadow that has weathered the sands of time. In a world that is often chaotic and ever-changing, the importance of self-discipline becomes a beacon a guiding light that can lead us through the storm. Through the lens of Aurelius and historic teachings, self-discipline is not a mere trait, but an art, an art of living. Self-discipline is the compass by which we navigate the seas of life. It is the anchor that holds us steady amid tempests and the sails that propel us forward. Through self-discipline, we attain mastery over ourselves, which in turn, begets a deeper understanding and engagement with the world around us. Thanks a lot. The life and philosophy of Marcus Aurelius serve as a testament to the transformative power of self-discipline. In this constantly interconnected world, where distractions are incessant and information is ceaseless, we need self-discipline now more than ever. It is through self-discipline that we can filter out the noise and focus on what truly matters. It is through self-discipline that we can be true to our values and principles and act not on impulse, but with deliberation and wisdom. What is particularly astonishing is how Marcus Aurelius, an emperor who lived nearly two millennia ago, could grapple with many of the same challenges and inner conflicts that we face today. This illuminates a profound truth. The human experience at its core is unchanging. Our fears, aspirations, dilemmas, and yearnings weave a common thread through the tapestry of time. And it is in this tapestry that the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius finds its enduring resonance. We live in an age of unprecedented opportunities and possibilities. Yet, with these opportunities come challenges and responsibilities. The stoic wisdom of Marcus Aurelius 
equips us with the mental fortitude to embrace these challenges, to wield them not as burdens, but as catalysts for growth and self-realization. As we conclude this video, let us reflect on the magnitude of our potential. Each one of us, in our own unique way, can be a philosopher, a seeker of truth, and a bearer of wisdom. Let the words of Marcus Aurelius be a reminder of the indomitable spirit that resides within each of us. Let his stoic resolve inspire us to build our reservoir of self-discipline. As we forge ahead on our respective journeys, let us carry with us the knowledge that self-discipline is not an end, but a means. A means to lead lives of purpose, integrity, and fulfillment. Let us remember that in the grand theatre of existence, we are both the playwright and the protagonist. Through self-discipline, we can pen epics of triumph, odes to joy, and ballads of resilience within the vast chronicles of history. Let the chapters we author be woven with threads of wisdom. Let each page be steeped in purpose. And let the ink that flows from our quills be that of self-discipline. With Marcus Aurelius as our steadfast sentinel, guiding us from the revered corridors of antiquity, let us march ahead with our gazes fixed firmly on the horizon and our hearts ablaze with the boundless figure of possibility. Thanks a lot. It is not events that disturb people, it is their judgments concerning them. Epictetus. Imagine a world where external events no longer dictate your happiness, where you have complete control over your emotions, and where you can find peace in the midst of chaos. Welcome to the world of Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that has guided countless individuals towards personal growth and fulfillment for centuries. At the heart of this philosophy lies the wisdom of Epictetus, a former slave turned philosopher who transformed his life through the power of Stoic thought. Today, we'll dive into the teachings of this extraordinary man and uncover the top 10 lessons from his renowned work, The Enchiridion. Epictetus was born in Phrygia, present-day Turkey, around 50 AD. Despite being born into slavery, he rose above his circumstances and became one of the most influential Stoic philosophers of all time. As a slave, he was owned by a high-ranking Roman official who recognized his intellectual potential and allowed him to study philosophy. Epictetus eventually became a student of the philosopher Musonius Rufus, who was a prominent Stoic teacher in Rome. After gaining his freedom, he began teaching philosophy in Rome, where his reputation quickly grew. However, when the Roman Emperor Domitian expelled all philosophers from Rome in 89 AD, Epictetus was forced to flee. He found refuge in Nicopolis, Greece, where he established a philosophical school that attracted students from across the Roman Empire. His teachings were recorded by one of his students, Arian, who compiled them into two main works, the Discourses and the Enchiridion. The Enchiridion, also known as the Handbook or Manual, is a concise collection of Epictetus's most essential teachings. It is a practical guide to living a virtuous life, providing valuable insights on how to navigate the challenges and uncertainties of our existence. The Stoic philosophy centers on the idea that we cannot control external events, but we can control our reactions to them. By cultivating inner strength, wisdom, and resilience, we can remain calm and composed in the face of adversity. This is achieved by focusing on our actions and thoughts, rather than being swayed by external circumstances or the opinions of others. In this video, we'll delve into the top 10 lessons from the Enchiridion, exploring the wisdom and practical advice that has stood the test of time. By understanding and applying these teachings, you too can experience the transformative power of Stoicism and unlock your potential for personal growth and self-improvement. As we embark on this journey through the Enchiridion, remember that the words of Epictetus are not just abstract ideas or theories. They are practical tools that can be applied to your everyday life. By embracing these lessons, 
and incorporating them into your daily routine, you can build a strong foundation for personal development and create a more fulfilling, purposeful existence. Lesson 1. Differentiating between what is in our control. Starting with a blank page can be overwhelming. Grammarly gives you a head start. Simply type a prompt to instantly generate an outline or brainstorm ideas. Download it for free at Grammarly.com. National forests are good places to get away, but sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. All I can see is their feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. We were definitely against the clock. How many more victims are out there? One of crime, Blood Mountain, now streaming only on Hulu. And what is not? One of the core principles of Stoic philosophy, as espoused by Epictetus in the Enchiridion, is the understanding that we should focus our energy on what is within our control and accept what is not. This simple yet powerful concept can have a profound impact on our well-being and overall satisfaction with life. Epictetus believed that our thoughts, beliefs and actions are within our control, while external events, the actions of others and the natural world are not. By recognizing this distinction, we can save ourselves from unnecessary stress, anxiety, and disappointment. Let's explore an example to illustrate this lesson. Imagine you're preparing for an important job interview. You've spent weeks researching the company.